The most underrated player in the Premier League, the player who's being touted as the next Kylian Mbappe, and the player who I would be prepared to spend big money on as he could be one of the best forwards of this generation. All of these three will feature in this video, so keep watching till the end. But before I go any further, if you need a place where you can keep up to date with the latest transfer news, find all the match stats you need from games across the globe, and watch highlights and stream live football matches, then you need to download the OneFootball app. I use the OneFootball app because it's completely free, and not only do they have stats and transfer news, but they also have videos to watch and articles to read, which is where I get a lot of my ideas for new videos and as I said before you can stream live football matches and watch highlights all on the app. Downloading the OneFootball app will help support the channel as well so I'll leave it linked in the description below. So in my Who Manchester United Should Sign series, I didn't include a striker in the six positions to improve this summer, but that was more because United needs such a big rebuild that I wanted to start the summer by bringing in players to improve the starting 11. And at the moment, I would stick with Ronaldo next season under Ten Hag, with Martial Rashford and McNeil as the alternative options. However, obviously Ronaldo is 37, and so long-term United do need a replacement, and Ten Hag may prioritise a striker this summer, so in this video, I'm going to go through a number of different strikers, assess them, and then narrow it down to my top three. So I'll briefly go through a number of different options and quickly give my opinion on them as a potential candidate for United to sign. First of all, what do United actually need from a striker? So with Ten Hag's side playing out from the back, they are going to come up against sides who look to press them high, so having a striker who can drop off and receive direct vertical passes into his feet or chest and bring other players into play by flicking the ball on will be extremely useful when United look to bypass the press. Now a lot of people assume with a possession-based side that having a diminutive force 9 is what's best suited to that style, with Jesus at Manchester City, Messi under Pep at Barcelona and Cesc Fabregas with the Spanish national side in 2012, all being great examples. However, I always feel that sides that look to control possession like City, Ten Hag's Ajax, and probably Ten Hag's Manchester United as well, would benefit from having a striker who is an aerial threat in the box, as with sides often camping deep against Ten Hag's United side, they're going to have a lot of the ball in wider positions in the final third, rather than in central positions. And so being able to put a cross into the box and have a striker who's able to create space with his movement and finish the headed opportunity is going to enable the side to score a lot more goals from a variety of different methods. I would assume that Ten Hag will likely use wingers playing from the opposite flank to their stronger foot. Sancho on the left and a new signing like Anthony from the right for example, so a striker who's able to score from curling in swinging crosses would be beneficial. And of course a striker needs to be able to function in a high pressing side, having a good understanding of the tactical side of the press and being a good reader of the game, as well as obviously being a good finisher and good outside of the box, able to link the play when needed. We'll start off with Darwin Nunes, who has been the striker that's been most heavily linked with Manchester United since Ten Hag has come in. I describe Nunes as an advanced pressing forward. Now what I mean by an advanced forward is that rather than dropping off between the lines to link the play, as someone like Harry Kane or Benzema would do, Nunes instead looks to utilise his pace by sitting high and making runs in behind the back line into the channels. He's been phenomenal in Liga Nos this season, scoring 26 goals in 28 games. The league's top scorer and for Benfica in the Champions League, he's hit 6 in 10 games and he's a similar kind of striker to someone like Edison Cavani. And not just because he's a Uruguayan with long hair, he's a physical striker standing at around 6 foot 2 in height, he's quick and he also has excellent movement in the penalty box. And this season, he's added finishing ability to improve his goal scoring output, with him being a good finisher from wide positions in the box, winning one-on-one -on -one situations and also in the air as well. However, I don't think United should make a move for him as firstly, he's a bit clunky outside of the box, not being as graceful at linking the play as I would like, and I do think that in Liga Nos, his goal scoring does balance this out and conceal this as a weakness. However, in the Premier League, I'm not convinced he'll hit 20 plus goals. And even though I do still think he will be a top five goal scorer in the league if he was to go to Manchester United, I think like with Lukaku and Ibrahimovic before, his style of play will slow United's attack down. And I think he could struggle to be that link man that United need. Now, if he was available for say 30 million, I think it would be worth the risk, especially given that he's just 22, 23 in June. But he's going to cost at least 60 million pounds which I think is just far too much. I do think if he was, say, to move to Italy or a side like Atletico Madrid, who play a lot quicker in transition and more direct as well, then he could thrive and become one of Europe's best strikers. But right now for Ten Hag, I think he's too expensive, not entirely suited to the style of play, and he's only been hitting these goal-scoring numbers for one season. And I could see him struggling to adapt to a side that doesn't directly play to his strengths. And there are some other strikers who I think Manchester United should avoid for a few different reasons. 
Victor Osimhen is a striker who I really like, and you can see why from his FB ref report. He's in the 90s for non-penalty XG and non-penalty goals. He overperforms his non-penalty XG by 0.11 per 90, and ranks pretty highly for metrics like progressive passes received and progressive carries, showing how good he is at linking the play and moving the ball forward, and he would be suited to Ten Hag's pressing style as well. However, he's going to cost at least £70 million, if not more, which is too much for Manchester United to pay this summer anyway, with other positions needing to be improved as well. So he is a transfer that would probably have to wait till the side has been partially rebuilt. I'd also avoid Alexander Mitrovic, as he has been insane for Fulham in the championship this season, scoring 43 goals and overperforming his XG massively as well. He certainly would provide an aerial threat that could provide United with an alternative attacking threat, however I'm still unconvinced entirely. I think he'd be an excellent signing for a mid-table side, probably being a 12-15 to 15 goal a season striker in the Premier League at this point in his career. He's 27 so is approaching his peak and could be worth a gamble for around 20-25 to 25 million max. But Fulham will probably demand close to 50 million, and for that reason, I'd avoid the Serbian. Andre Silva is a player I do like, and I could see him working well in a strike partnership with Ronaldo if Ten Hag wanted versatility in his tactical setup. He's a player who I feel is on the cusp of becoming a world-class striker, having a fantastic goal-scoring season for Eintracht Frankfurt in 2020-2021, scoring 21 non-penalty goals in that campaign in 32 appearances, with only Lewandowski and Haaland scoring more. However, he'd cost at least 45 to 50 million pounds, and I think that's too much to take a gamble on for Manchester United. Maybe if he was around 30 to 35 million, but if United are going to spend upwards of 50 million on a striker, I would need to be convinced not just of their current ability, but in them developing into a world-class striker, and Silva is a player I'm on the fence with. Jonathan David, Gianluca Scamacca, and Moussa Dembele also fall into this category as well. I don't necessarily think that they are bad signings, but I do question whether they would have the ability to progress onto that next level. Dembele is probably the one of these four that I would target, because he looks the best in terms of his goal-scoring metrics, ranking in the 80s and 90s for non-penalty goals and non-penalty XG, and the fact that his non-penalty XG is so high, does show he has the ability to find space and create shooting opportunities for himself, whilst he's also very good at dropping off to link the attack and providing an aerial threat in the box as well. I think in a better team than Leon and with some development, he is most likely out of that group to become a top level striker that United would need. He'd also only cost around 25 million as he has just one year left on his current contract, quite a bit cheaper than Jonathan David or Skamaka and a lot cheaper than Silva, and he's still just 25 so could be a good backup to Ronaldo. But I do think that I have three strikers who are in one way or another better options for United in this summer's transfer window. The first option and my dream striker signing is Lataro Martinez. Now I did rule out Osim Hen and Nunes largely because of both players transfer fees but Lataro Martinez would also be expensive with Inter reportedly demanding between 60 and 70 million pounds. However in this case I wouldn't be against Manchester United spending say 65 million this summer on the Argentine who will be 25 in August. This is because not only do I think Martinez is a perfect stylistic fit for Ten Hag system at Manchester United but he also is already a top level striker who in the next few seasons can push on and become world class. I'd describe Lotaro Martinez as a deep line forward who drops off from the forward line to link the attack in the midfield lines in a similar way to how Benzema does for Real Madrid. He's capable of receiving a vertical pass into his feet when under pressure which will allow Ten Hag's side to bypass the opposition's front line press with a more direct outlet if they need. But in and around the box he's also shown this season just how good a finisher he is with some spectacular goals. The one against Liverpool from outside of the box is one that comes to mind. A couple of fantastic volleys from within the box as well. And this season, he's really improved his goal scoring output, scoring 19 goals in 33 Serie A games and 23 in 46 games in all competitions. And his FB ref report looks very impressive as well, ranking in the mid to high 80s for non penalty XG and non penalty goals, whilst overperforming his non penalty XG by 0.04 per 90, which is always a good sign, but he is also ranking pretty high for expected assists and shot creating actions, showcasing his ability to create chances for others and out of possession he's probably one of the best pressing forwards in Europe. Being excellent at reading passes and being able to make interceptions as seen with him ranking in the 98th percentile for that metric and just overall I think he's exactly the type of striker that Ten Hag would need. A player who can link the attack in the middle third by receiving a vertical pass and in the final third with one touch passes and flicks whilst also being a top level goal scorer as well and having the defensive attribute that 
that the likes of Roberto Firmino and Diego Jota have shown to be so valuable in the modern game, so I think if United do want to spend big on a striker, Lotaro fits the bill and could be one of the top strikers in this generation. Next up we have a player who I think is criminally underrated and it's Leicester's Kalechi Iheanacho. Iheanacho is one of the best creative strikers, not just in the Premier League but in Europe. For Leicester he's used as a player to link the attack, dropping off from the forward line and using his stocky build to receive the ball, hold the defender off and bring on running teammates into play. But he also doubles as a playmaker at times as well, as when he's able to turn with the ball his weight of pass on through balls to find on running players is usually spot on and this will be perfect if Ten Hag deploys a system where either the wide attackers or central midfielders are able to make runs off of Iheanacho's deeper movement in behind the back line and players like Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, Anthony Alanga, Jadon Sancho and Cristiano Ronaldo as well could all provide these type of runs. When we look at his FB ref report we can see this in statistical form. As you can see he ranks in the high 90s for assists and expected assists as well showing he is top level in terms of chance creating amongst forwards and his progressive metrics also register highly sitting around the 70th percentile. He does need to improve his goal scoring metrics or rather how many chances he receives as you can see he is on point with his non-penalty xg which is a good sign and just naturally at Manchester United he's going to receive more chances than at Leicester and Rodgers does deploy him more as an attacking midfielder at times so under Ten Hag I would expect Ihanacho to score more than just the four he has managed this season as he did register 12 in 25 last season which is a pretty good return. He shouldn't have any problems in the press either he provided a degree of versatility in the attack as well able to play as a lone striker as a deeper line forward or alongside Ronaldo in a front two as well. He may not be United's long term answer but given that he's still just 25 and would likely cost between 30 and 35 million and he's a player who like Wijnaldum, Jota and Idrissa Gay can develop into a top level player despite not being hyped up in the same way as others when they are in their early to mid 20s. It seems like a gamble that has more upside than downside and at least he'd give United depth in the forward position if they then went out and got a big name forward the season after next. And the final name on this list List is someone who English football fans probably haven't heard of but he has been compared to Kylian Mbappe and his name is Hugo Ekatike. Ekatike is just 19 years old but this season has scored 9 goals in just 22 games in Ligue 1 for a Rem side who have scored just 39 in total and when we analyse him further you can see where the comparisons to Mbappe come from. Obviously he's young and French but like Mbappe he is tall, powerful and has an athletic stature. Being able to use a burst of acceleration to drive past opposition players. He is isn't as electric as Mbappe but who is. Ekatike is also a very good technical player able to control passes into his feet under pressure or lofted balls in the air and he links play very well dropping off from the forward line using first time flicks to move the ball into the path of teammates. He's also able to drift into channels to provide outlook runs and thrives when in one on ones where he can then take on defenders and you'll see just how good he is at doing this when we look at his FB ref report. Around the box he's also able to use his quick feet and ball control to shift the ball away from defenders to get in a shooting position and I do think that in a better side he'd get a lot more goals as at Rem he is somewhat starved for attacking service. His FB ref report showcases a phenomenal talent. He massively overperforms his non-penalty XG which isn't sustainable in the long run but does show his finishing capabilities and per 90 he is ranking in the 93rd percentile for non-penalty goals despite playing for one of the poorest attacking sides in Ligue 1. His dribbling and progressive carries are top level as well showing he can progress the ball up the pitch as well as score goals and defensively he's putting up outstanding metrics sitting in the 99th percentile for interceptions which is exactly what you want from your forward in an aggressive pressing side. Overall I think Ekatike whilst young and raw has potential to explode in the next few seasons and that's why he would be the striker I would sign this summer as he'd also likely be available for around 30 to 35 million which is the reported fee which I think is an absolute bargain considering his potential. Ideally United would get Lataro Martinez as well in the summer along with Ekatike who could be used as a wide forward alongside him but because of United's massive rebuild needed the Argentine may have to wait till next summer but if Ten Hag does want a striker this summer Ekatike would be my first choice with Ihanacho a backup as Latoro is probably more of a dream long term signing. So thank you for watching, give the video a like if you enjoyed it, put your thoughts on who United should sign in the comments section below, I'll try to get round to as many as possible, subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you do get notified when my videos come out and check the description for some more videos as well.